going on guys? Vegito here and today we're starting a brand new what if and our first crossover what if being what if Goku and Vegeta were in Pokemon. And I'm just gonna explain this one right away. They're not the Goku and Vegeta that we all know and love. Instead, their character is heavily based on them. If I had to get your Saiyan genetics, there would be no story. So now I'm explaining what region they'll be from, and that is Sinnoh. So I feel like this is the most realistic choice. So now we need to discuss our starting locations, and let's start with Vegeta. And here's what's rather tricky to come up with, but since Vegeta is a prince, I need to pick somewhere we often see rich people. So that will be the Battle Zone, with his dad being a former Tower Tycoon. Let me show his dad all she's used renders of King Vegeta. And now for Goku! We'll be starting in Celestic Town, which makes the most sense since it's so similar to a place to Mount Paozu. And his parents are level trainers in the Battle Tower, which is where Vegeta gets his superiority complex. And since Goku's parents are always in the Battle Tower, he's mainly raised by his grandpa, Professor Rowan. And I also forgot to mention, this way it takes place at the same time as Ash's Sinnoh journey. Alright, 100 likes guarantees a part 2. So let's get started! We'll start with Vegeta. For this, for this part, I decided this by a matter of coin toss. It's the most fair option, so let's get into it. Along with Vegeta's dad being a former Tower Tycoon, his parents were also breed Piplup and other Pokemon. So Vegeta's dad ends up getting a Pokedex or Professor Rowan, but with a customization. It allows Vegeta to scan the IVs, birth power, of Pokemon. So he scans all the Piplup using his IV scanning feature, and finds a rather strong one with perfect IVs. And Vegeta decides that he'll make this Piplup his starter, which has moves Liquidation, Dig, Drill Peck, and Ice Beam. If you think this is too OP for a starting move set, remember, Vegeta wants to have the best possible Pokemon. So after that, Vegeta starts his journey by traveling to the mainland of Sinnoh by boat. And he ends up getting seasick in a very comedic fashion. But this boat gets off by Snowpoint City, so Vegeta decides his first location would be Sunny Shore City, since it has the strongest gym leader in Sinnoh. Because he thinks picking up the strongest gym leader first will make him a bigger threat to the other gym challengers. So on the way to Sunny Shore City, he manages to get to Larvitar, which is game with his IV checker, and like his Piplup, it has perfect IVs. And after another week, he catches a Drew, also perfect IVs, which brings his team to three Pokemon. And already, he even challenges Volter for a gym battle. And I decided to take a page from Pokemon Origins, having Gym Leader's team based on how many badges the challenger has. So Volter will only use two Pokemon being Elekid and Pikachu, and Vegeta using Sandshrew and Larvitar. Elekid and Larvitar come out first, with Larvitar opening battle to Earthquake, and Elekid trying to go for Ice Punch. But unfortunately for Volkner, this Earthquake knocks out Elekid in one clean shot, hitting Volkner with one. Pikachu couldn't last for Volkner, and uses Iron Tail with Quick Attack, as sort of a Pup and Sting slash Blitz tactic. And this works, knocking out Larvitar after a while. But Pikachu is SEVERELY damaged! So Sandshrew, using their Crush Claw and their Earthquake attack, knocked out Pikachu rather easily. And Voltar just stands there shocked that he was beaten so easily. And this leads to Voltar's depression arc, allowing Vegeta to get the Beacon Badge. Now that Vegeta has his first badge, let's swap our focus over to Goku. We think against Pokédex and his starter Chemchar for Professor Rowan. And in case anyone's wondering, Goku's Pokédex is orange and blue. And Goku's wife, not wife, Goku's grandma, Professor Rowan's wife, gives Goku one more gift. A Munchlax! Now with Chemchar and Munchlax with him, Goku then sets off on his journey. And decides to go to Candlelave City first. Now on the way to Candlelave, Goku spots a Lapras being attacked by poachers. Being the kind natured person that he is, Goku sends in Chimchar and Munchlax to help save the Lapras. With Chimchar using Thunder Punch and Munchlax using Giga Impact, and they have saying the poachers flying. Lapras then thanks, the, thanks Goku for saving it by joining his team. Which now brings Goku's team to three, he Pokemon, so after picking Lapras, Goku gets back on the road. 
and rise the candlelight. It means Junior Byron, which this battle is two on two, with Goku and Chimchar and Lapras against Byron's Bronzor and Bastiodon. Bronzor and Chimchar come out first, with Chimchar using Flamethrower against Bronzor's Gyro Ball. The results in a clash leading to Chimchar taking some damage, but Chimchar uses Thunder Punch, and Bronzor uses Psychic to slam Chimchar into a wall, knocking it out. This just leaves Goku with one, and Goku calls in his Lapras next. And it finishes out the weakened Bronzor, but not for taking a Flash Cannon, making us about one on one with Byron's hitting in Bastiodon. Bastiodon uses Metal Burst, so taking a Surf on Lapras. And then Bastiodon finishes off Lapras with an Iron Head and Flash Cannon combo, meaning Goku has officially lost his first gym battle. Byron says to Goku, Son, you put up a good fight. But take these words to heart. No matter how much experience you have with the trainer, there will always be someone stronger. Byron also says to Goku, Why don't we take a boat to Iron Island? Seek a guy named Lucario, or named Riley, and then come back for a rematch. So Goku then takes these words to heart and takes a boat to Iron Island after his Pokemon healed up. And after about a week, Goku arrives to Iron Island to begin training for his rematch with Byron. And during this time, he finds Riley, and Riley tries to teach Goku and Chimchar how to use Aura. And after a few weeks of Aura training, Goku and Chimchar had the basics down, which sets up Chimchar eventually being able to learn Aura Sphere. What anyone says anything about? Like, Chimchar can't learn Aura Sphere. I know Chimchar can't learn Aura Sphere. It's the closest thing to the Kamehameha in the Pokemon universe. And since it's Goku's starter, I think it would make sense! And Munchlax and Lapras also get stronger in his time. Mains went high horsepower for Munchlax and Body Slam for Lapras. And during Goku's final aura test, Chimchar managed to use a small aura sphere. So Goku heads back to Candlelave, with Goku re challenging Byron with the same choice he made as last time. With Goku using Chimchar and Lapras, and Byron using Bronzor and Bastiodon. And like last time, Bronzor and Chimchar go out first, but thanks to Riley's training, Chimchar is able to use its aura to make its fire type moves stronger. And outright torches Bronzor with an aura enhanced flamethrower. But Chimchar is taking a psychic first. Leaving Byron one. Meaning Bastiodon comes back out with Chimchar using Flamethrower and the small Aura Sphere. And after that, Chimchar manages to evolve into Monferno. And it goes for Mock Punch. He's the Aura Sphere to knock out Bastiodon. Leaving Byron rather surprised. He says, Well done, Goku! You took my words to heart and allowed you to win. Take this Mind Badge. You've earned it. Allowing Goku to add the Mind Badge to his case. And now that Goku and Vegeta have one badge each, I think this is a good place to leave off for right now. So remember, 100 likes guarantees a part two. So we'll all go on and get out of here. Peace!